Hello and welcome to UMETSAT. My name is Mark Higgins. In this series of videos, we're going to be walking through how you can discover, download, manipulate and visualize some of the amazing Copernicus Sentinel-3 data that we provide. In the following videos, we're going to introduce you to some of the UMETSAT product experts. They're going to walk you through how you use some of the free and open tools like BRAT, SNAP and QGIS to really get under the skin of these data, to manipulate it and visualize it. We really hope that you will enjoy and use this data in your work or your curiosity about the earth and marine environment. Hello and welcome to UMETSAT. My name is Mark Higgins. Today we're continuing our videos on how to use the Copernicus data. Up till now we've been showing you data from the Sentinel-3 satellite. There's a number of satellites that we also have that contribute to the Copernicus program. And today I'm going to be showing you data from the ASCAT instrument, which is on board the METOP satellite, and you can see our model behind me. ASCAT's the little uh, radar, so you can see the three bars just behind me. And what it does in this particular case is give us information about wind over the ocean. So let's go inside, get out of the wind outside, and uh, show you what we can do with the satellite. So welcome back inside. A lot of what I'm going to show you now, I'm going to show you two cases. Um, there's much more detail in a, an online lesson that we've done with the Comet program in the States that gives a lot of detail about the scatterometer. So I'm going to summarize a lot of things now, but there's a huge amount of detail in that lesson. We'll provide you a link. So here's the scatterometer flying north above the ocean. A couple of things to point out. So those fans that you saw, those uh, bands, they're taking three measurements over the ocean surface. It's a radar, the energy goes down, bounces back up. By taking the three measurements, we not only get speed, but we get direction. Another thing to notice, there's no sensitivity directly beneath the scatterometer, so you're getting two swaths. So when you look at a global view of the data, you see many more what look like orbits, but they aren't, than you would normally see. So you can see here, this orbit, has got two swaths associated. This orbit has two swaths associated with it. Just one thing to notice. So quite often when you look at this stuff, you'll see the scatterometer timings on there. So let's now have a look at an example of looking at a storm using these data. Now the two examples I'm gonna show you are both about looking at discontinuities in the wind field. How can you work out what's happening on the surface even though it's obscured by cloud? Here's an example from Tropical Cyclone Hood Hood. This was the 10th of October 2014. The challenge here is to identify the center of the circulation. You know it's in here somewhere. There's no defined eye, no defined uh, center of circulation that you can see clearly from the satellite image. You might guess it's somewhere around here, but you'd like to confirm exactly where it is and also to properly understand the structure of the wind field associated with this storm. So if I overlay the scatterometer data, and you can see we've used a binned scale for the winds here to make the structures stand out much more clearly. You can see this cyclone center here with the brown colors indicating the hurricane force winds right in the center and you can see that center of circulation and this little pattern here that shows what's going on. So using these data because it looks straight through the cloud you can see the center of circulation really quite clearly. Another example is looking at a trough um, near the UK so again this is an example from uh, 2014 from October and you can see the light winds here, light winds here, slightly stronger winds with the green colours, and you can see a discontinuity in the pattern just coming from the north down towards the southwest. So there's clearly some form of surface structure in here. And if we look at the UK surface chart from the same period, you can see that that surface front position is just here. Now I'd imagine actually that the scatterometer data may have been used in positioning that surface front. And you can imagine on the satellite image data, you would have seen a lot of clouds just over this, obscuring the actual positioning of the, the surface front. So I've just shown you two examples here of how to position surface discontinuities using the scatterometer data. As I said earlier, there's a lot of detail in that uh, online lesson, and we really encourage you to look at that if you want to know more. You can get the data from the OZSI website if you want to have a quick look. We'll provide a link to that. And I'd like to also thank the folk who work in the OZSAF and also at NOAA NESDIS um, for all the work they do on making this data available and supporting users in it. Really hope you enjoy using the data. If you've got questions, do let us know. Thank you very much.